What's up, film family? My name's Crew, as you know, and this is a good friend of mine, Cameron. He helps me on set with a lot, a lot of films that we do together. Today, we are going to talk to you about glide cams, specifically our HD 2000s. Yeah, so the first thing we're gonna be talking today about is balancing. Balancing is the most important thing, I think, for sure, because without good balance, you're not getting steady shots. There's a couple ways to balance your glide cam correctly. The first one is with your two knobs on the back, which controls your forward and backward, and on the side, which controls your left to right. Camera? So specifically, uh, because your balance is the foundation of everything that you're going to do and the look of your shot and how it's going to run, you're going to want to make sure that you're balanced properly, meaning make sure that your lens cap is off. You're set to the focal length that you want, your battery is in and your card is in, and if you're going to have a microphone, make sure that that's on too. Make sure everything is set to the weight that it's going to be when you're going to uh, shoot because you want to balance it that way. If you take your lens cap off right before the shot, you're going to be out of balance. Um, aside from that, when you are balancing, Cruz said you have your knobs, those are going to be your fine adjustments. Your major adjustment is where you place your camera on the plate. So when I'm using my 5D Mark III, I have to move my plate over and back because the weight sits much differently than if I'm using a smaller camera that I had at, at the beginning. Also another thing is I always shoot with my monitor um, on the back of my camera and Cameron likes to shoot with the monitor, the swivel screen out into the side and tilt it up so that way he can look at it down, which is dope, but I just hate having to uh, adjust for that because I would be moving the monitor constantly. Another really important thing is your drop time. Cameron can talk about drop time all day and night because he just is better with it than I am, but essentially it's the wings at the bottom and the shaft, um, it, they go up and down that controls what your drop time is going to be, which should be around 2.5 to 3 seconds. Cameron, would you like to elaborate on the drop time? Yeah. Uh, if you drop your weights farther down, it's just going to change the center of gravity, making the bottom lower, um, making the bottom heavier, rather. So when you bring it up, your drop time, the slower drop time means that the bottom and the top are going to be more equal. You're going to be towards equilibrium and you're not going to have a big weight towards one end. So if you take your camera and you move it forward and back or left and right to test out your balance, if it's out of balance, it's going to swing like a pendulum when you stop. If it's in balance, everything should stay straight vertical, top and bottom. If you're having trouble getting your camera to weigh as much as your weights, I know when I started out with my T3i and my um, kit lenses, they were all very light and I had to use a microphone and put it on top to give my camera a little more weight on so that I could end. get it equal. Yeah, because my camera just wasn't heavy enough for the glide cam that I was using. And if you're using something like a 5D Mark IV or a 1DX Mark II, uh, like a heavier body, then um, it should have weights. So you should have a bunch of extra weights that you can put on or take off depending on the weight that you have. Um, so the next topic is walking heel to toe. So walking heel to toe is really important um, because not only does your camera need to stay stable, your body needs to stay stable as well. And walking heel to toe absolutely helps that because you're not like clunking around like a dinosaur. You know what I mean? Yeah, and one good way to test that, to see that lurching when you're walking, is to use a tighter lens. Use a 70 or an 85 or something like that. Throw that on your glide cam and you'll really be able to tell where your footsteps are when you're walking and you'll be able to cut that down. A lot of times we like to stay wider than a 50 millimeter so we can cut down a lot of that foreground, background movement where people can tell that we're taking steps. It'll smooth it out a little bit for you. They say walk like a duck. I don't know why they say that, because ducks waddle. Yep. Don't listen to that. Don't want your butt waddling back and forth when you're walking with a glide cam. <laughs> <laughs> um, so next topic, uh, it's more so, it's not actually, it doesn't have to do with like, uh, being stable or walking or anything like that, but it's more about the movement of your of your machine. It's called feathering, and it is one thing that I am super, super adamant on. And uh, what you do is you're supposed to choke up on your shaft. Don't laugh. <laughs> you know, yeah, I said don't laugh. Okay, so that almost seems rehearsed, and it wasn't. It so. was not. All right, so you want to you want to choke on your <clears throat> choke up on your on your. 
on your shaft. <laughs> and what you do is you go like this, and what that does is it can it's like constant control of your of your machine. So when you're like moving sideways and you want to pan, you just put a little bit of friction either left or right, and you get those nice smooth pans without any like. Uh, heavy clunking or anything like that. It's just very smooth and easy easy to control your, your machine like that. Um, Cameron, when I first met him, didn't do that. I don't. I just don't think anybody showed you. Yeah, honestly, we traded off. I didn't feather and you didn't do the drop time. I never did drop so times. We made each other better by doing that. That's true. But yeah, I used to balance my camera as precise as possible. I would try to make everything perfect and then I'd try to do my whole shot with one hand and hope that everything turned the way I wanted and didn't seesaw back and forth. And eventually I gave up. You know, when you're running, when you're shooting a wedding, when you're shooting an event, and you want to switch focal lengths, you don't have time to dial yourself in perfectly every time. You want to be as close as you can, but really, you know, feathering can give you that little bit of buffer that you need to not have to do all that fine tuning and be able to jump from one focal length to the other and, and, and just feather those minor adjustments that you need to make. Yeah. And also, yeah, if you're not 100% dialed in, it just, having having that control like if there's wind and it and it starts to make you bow a bit having your hand there to like feather to the right or the left really helps you keep control whether it's windy or whatever your your elements are that that you're fighting cuz there's always something that you're fighting when you're shooting this is huge for me i love doing this i've been doing this um Recently, I've been getting really into it, uh, shooting upside down. So what that is, is when you take your, your glide cam and you, seeing as it's three axis, you can flip it upside down. And I keep my hand where it would be if it was right side up. So my hand doesn't move, it's, it's just right here. And then you go down and you capture like somebody's feet and you go up. It's, it's an amazing, I don't like to say the word cinematic, I feel like it's overused, but it's an epic, and as he said. Dynamic. Dynamic. Or legendary. Yeah, legendary is what it was. Like. Yeah, I like the legendary. <laughs> Dynamic is, is true as well. But um, it's like just that power shot. Um, I like It's not like the Gladiator, but I think of the Gladiator. But the reason that you do it is so that way you can get your camera as close to the ground as possible. So you can get that that like um, upward, that powerful shot from the bottom going up. Um, there's a really cool scene that we shot at the park that I'll probably throw in here about now -ish. now yeah cool um that i that i shot of cameron that was super cool of him like doing his hair back total accident but it worked great happy accident happy accident uh what are your experiences with shooting upside down yeah i i hadn't really tried it very much before i started shooting with you and i really like the way i like to use a wide angle and get up tight to a wall especially if i have a lot of material on the wall that i can use and i like the way that a wide angle when you push along the wall will start a warp and it does the same thing on the ground when I'm using my wide angles. It'll kind of warp the concrete or the gravel or whatever we're walking by. It gives you a really nice dynamic foreground movement that uh, precedes your talent and uh, just gives you a lot more to look at. If you guys watched my last video, uh, any it was a promo video I did on my Instagram for any means necessary. At the very last scene, the very last scene after I cut from the uh, the guillotine, there's a scene of uh, Cameron actually upside down, and he was pulling back as it said, "Any means necessary," and that was that was how he used what he was just talking about in a in a in a short little one of my segments. favorite little tricks. Yeah. That's pretty much everything. There's one little like extra little tip and trick that uh, I would like to talk to you guys about. It's I don't know the name of this uh, maneuver, but uh, essentially you have a subject and they're standing. It, and this doesn't work all the time. It depends on what your surrounding is. Um, but you shoot them from below, and you get you shoot up, getting that that powerful pose angle. Yeah, the power shooting angle. up at their face. Yeah, shoot up at their face so you get that power angle. And as you pan right or left go upward kind of like a ring of like around like Saturn and then you go shooting downward so you get that POV that uh, point of view of whatever they're looking at or interacting with um, and then you come back around and catch what they're doing um, but yeah it's like a little oval and it's just a great a great little uh, technique to use with a, a glide cameras or any any type of stabilizer that I like to do what do you think it makes you feel when you see that? Yeah, I just think it adds a bunch of uh, intimacy to the shot, especially, I mean, depending on what you're doing, but when you have your main character and you're close up in tight on them, feeling what they feel, you can circle around, get that point of view of what they're looking at and come back around for the reaction. 
it's always going to give you a more dynamic scene as far as feeling what they feel and seeing what they see and being in close to that experience. Yeah, absolutely. I tried to do it the opposite way. It didn't work as well. I'm not going to lie to you. Get shooting down at somebody's head from below, unless there's like a, a fire. Yeah, that would actually be kind of cool. Yeah, that would now be a good shot. Pretty okay, good. actually, <laughs> uh, I guess you can use it the opposite way. Um, anyway, that uh, those are the five tips and tricks that that we thought of to give you guys for how to operate your glide cam, how to how to understand your equipment a little better, um, especially if you're new to this. Um, don't give up. It is hard, and there is absolutely a learning curve to it. I don't know how long it took me to like figure out how to dial everything in and get it right. Like I had to go to Ohio and learn with Zebulon Thomas. I'm sure you guys remember that video from last year. Um, but I had to have someone like teach me because it was very difficult for me to get the hang of it. So, so absolutely don't yeah. give up. I know the first couple times I used mine, I was definitely out of balance. I wasn't doing things right. I still got some nice shots that I like, but there was a lot I could learn. Uh, don't stop researching. Don't stop looking into different techniques. If you have any questions, if you want a longer video with more explanation, I'm sure Crew and I would love to do that for you. We if you have any other equipment you want to see us uh, explain or demo or anything like that, leave a comment below. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, please subscribe. You know, subscribe, hit the bell, ding, um, throw a comment in the bottom. We want to know what you want to learn. So anything you guys want to learn, throw it in there. Any questions you have, throw it in there, whether it's photography, videography, we do it both. Please, please, please talk to us because we can't make more stuff for you if you don't tell us what you want to see. So, um, love to see you guys in the next one. Have a good day. Also, before we leave, before we leave, we want to tell you a little bit about how we shot this. And I know it seems simple, like we're just like chilling on the porch. Not that simple, no. So, I have an ADD over there connected to a Joby and a 16 to 35? Yep. 16 to 35, 2.8. Over here, we have the 60 Mark II connected to a receiver. Um, and it's the 24 to 105, which I use constantly. We have, I'll let you talk about this. This is uh, my Sennheiser mic with my Sony wireless setup. I love this bad boy. So does crew. It gives us a lot better audio than sounds, we used to have. Sounds, yeah, it sounds, sounds much better. Um, and then I have a, just, you know, the, I hate saying newer because I don't, one, know how to pronounce it, and two, uh, I always used to not love their gear. I'd be like, no, nah, they're shit. It's like cheap and fuck it. But you know what? I bought a light panel from them and it, you could change your, your temperatures and your brightness, like your, your temperature and your lumen and it's great. And I think it's a, it's a nifty little inexpensive panel and I love it. So that's what we have here to brighten us up from the bright background behind us. It's also battery powered and it's saved us on a couple shoots not having to plug into a wall. It actually did, yeah. Um, we used it if you, the last video that we did together, the any means necessary. If you saw that red under, that red under glow on the guillotine, that was actually from a gel that we put in front of the, uh, the panel. But anyway, five tips and tricks. You guys learned it here. If you want to see more of this guy, just type in Cameron. See you guys next time.